started. As you uh, kind of heard already, my name is Angela Shaw, the IT Senior Associate Director for the Global IT Legal Services Team at Beringer Ingelheim. I've actually been with Beringer Ingelheim for 21 years. It's just that nine of those years have been specific within IT. Two of those years have been specific in my current role. To tell you a little bit about uh, Beringer Ingelheim, we are a global company and one of the world's uh, leading pharmaceutical in companies that exist. Our headquarters, as I mentioned, are in Germany, but they are in Ingelheim, uh, Germany. We're family owned and we're founded in 1885. We have three primary areas of focus. That's human pharma, animal health, and biopharmaceutical contract manufacturing. Now, as a global organization, we have over 52,000 employees worldwide. And within IT, we have over 1,500 employees. With my team specifically, I have individuals that are here in the US, in Connecticut with me, but then I also have individuals in Argentina and in Germany. So sometimes people have asked me, you know, why have I been with the same company for as long as I have? And my answer is twofold. And that is, one, I have been able to drive the development of my career throughout the time that I've been here. And two, I know that what I'm doing at the end of the day is making a difference. So it doesn't matter that I work in IT because Beringer Ingelheim is a patient-centric organization and any department is connected to improving the lives of humans and animals. So now that you can answer any basic trivia questions about Beringer Ingelheim, let's go with unlocking your team's potential. And to flow into this, I'm going to tell you about how I actually got started into IT. Um, and don't worry, th this is related. We're gonna go back, like way back when I was in high school. And I was talking to my guidance counselor who you talk to at the, you know, your junior, senior year of school. And I was informing them that I wanted to go to a technical school for computer technology. That was where my desire was. And the guidance counselor actually advised me against this said that if this was my chosen career path, I would find myself flipping burgers my whole life. That's some interesting feedback, huh? So I'm going to ask you now, what motivates you? So in the chat, in one or two words, I want you to post what motivates you, what gets you going? So I'll give you a moment to do that. I know uh, for myself, family is a motivator. I think like it, no, no matter how old we are, we want to make our parents proud. We want our partners to celebrate in our accomplishments. But I wanna hear from you. What is it that motivates you? Kids, yes. That's a great one. Thank you so much for sharing, Jamie. Savitha, learning new things, team success, pride. These are all get great. Learning, personal growth, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing. So while you're thinking about these things that motivate you, I'm now, I now want you to think about the difference between motivation and drive because they actually mean something different. And according to the Cambridge Dictionary, motivation is the willingness to do something, while drive is a planned effort to achieve something. What does this mean? So again, going back to my hamburger story that I put a pause in, I got that feedback from that guidance counselor and I was motivated. I, you know, I was a teenager. I wanted to prove that guidance counselor that I could go to this technical school. So I did, I was willing to go to the technical school for computer technology and I succeeded at it. I graduated with honors, but then that's where it ended for me. 
I don't know why. I don't know if it was self-doubt or what, but I actually ended up pursuing a career in a totally different path. <laughs> I had no planned effort after that point. So I, I was missing that drive that I needed to carry me forward. So now let's fast forward to within this decade. And I reached a point in my career where I realized I wanted to have more passion around what I was doing every day. And so I really had to dig deep on what is this? What gets me going? And I realized I'm a computer nerd at heart. This is where my passion lies. So this time around, I was motivated. I was willing to change my career path, which my career, by the way, the 21 years, right, at Beringer, landed me at Beringer. It was just in a different area. But just as I had the naysayer before, I had somebody, again, influential in my life telling me at this point in my career, changing would not be good for me. I was good at what I was doing, and that's what I should stick to. But this time around, I was driven. I was going to have a planned effort to not only make sure that I moved into a career of information technology, but that I was successful in doing so. And so I had a development plan. I had step-by-step -step actions that I needed to take to get me to that place I wanted to be. And I did that. So now I want to ask you, what's the secret for unlocking your team's potential? Well, I'm not gonna wait, make you wait to the end of the presentation to give you that information. I'm going to tell you now, if you haven't figured it out, and that is you need team members that have both motivation and drive to be successful. This is how you really unlock your team's potential to get them going to reach your goals. So I'm going to share with you some tips that have worked for me with my team that hopefully then you can embrace and carry forward to yours. And as I'm going through giving examples, if you have something that has worked for your teams, please uh, feel free to put it in the chat as well. So tip number one, keep your team members aligned to strategic goals. Your team members need to have clear direction to where they are going. They shouldn't be wandering around aimlessly. You need to provide them with that drive. So how can you help your employees have a vested interest and clear direction to those goals? When you do your goal planning and the steps needed to get there, don't do this in a silo. Do this as a team event. Involve your team members where they are determining what is it that I individually need to do? What is it that I, as part of the team, need to do to make this happen? This helps your employees to really feel drawn and connected to the goals that they have and empowered as they work through that. Then have monthly roundtable discussions around this. I love this. This is something that I do with my team today, where it's a monthly pulse check. How are we doing? What have we accomplished so far? What are we not on target that we need to make adjustments? And then we all are in the same room together where we can motivate and reprioritize if need be. And then likewise, have an annual review. So this takes all your monthly roundtable discussions and puts it together for the end of the year. And I think first and foremost, you should celebrate your team's accomplishments. Your team has worked really hard the past year. So take time, recognize that. Maybe have each team member share one accomplishment that they are most proud of that year for doing. And then go into like a lessons learned exercise. What is it that worked really well that you want to continue to do the next year? What is it that didn't work so well that you need to make adjustments for or maybe even stop doing for that next year? And then link all of the work that your team is receiving back to your strategic pillars. I like this for two reasons. One, it helps ensure that all the work that your team is doing is actually stuff they're supposed to be doing that's going to help you reach your goals. But then two, it allows your team members to speak intelligently to senior leaders about how they are contributing to the goals of the organization. So the big takeaway with tip number one is provide the drive to your team. Involve your team members and keep the goals constantly in view. So tip number two is focus on employee development. I'm sure you've heard this one before. If you make the investment, 
They're going to make the investment back to you. And then prepare your teams for the future needs of the organization. So examples of making the investment. One of the things that we do at Beringer Ingelheim it, within IT specifically is have these IT knowledge hours. And this is where I, IT department, share my new technology, my new process with you, another IT department. And it's a great opportunity for that knowledge sharing, keeps us all informed on what's the latest for each of our areas. However, we've found out that we're never having those non-technical conversations. So we started these uh, streaming sessions that we've labeled No Tech Talks. The target audience is IT, but we wanted people to know that this isn't your average knowledge hour. This is something special. And we cover topics such as um, volunteering, the importance of networking, why you should be a mentor, have a mentor. Uh, this month, actually Monday, we're covering empowerment. So it's something that we start every call off with saying this has absolutely nothing to do with technology and everything to do with you. And the feedback on this has been great. Another example is have focused development exercises and conversations with your employees. So again, uh, the conversations around development shouldn't only be occurring at the end of the year, but it should be something continuously taking place. Um, and you can do development exercises to help with those. We've done a river of life example on my team. Um, this is, or I guess it's your river of your career, but it's where you draw a picture of your career, what it took you to get there, what boulders did you encounter? What forks in the river did you have to make a decision? And then that's allow, that allows employees to take an introspective look to what steps they took to where they want to go, and then how do they get there going forward. And then as I shared before, prepare your team for the future needs of the organization. Things are going to change. You need to have your team ready for that. So are you upskilling your team members to make sure they have that skill set of the future and that their skill set isn't becoming stagnant? Tip number three, motivating your team. Do this by having a flexible and diverse team. And then you want to make sure that you're keeping your team motivated through change. So examples of a flexible team. I've built my team to be process and system agnostic. What does that mean? It means that as the business ebbs and flows, my team member can ebb, ebb and flow with the organization. If there's a high volume of work in one area, they can all adjust to help with that particular initiative. If somebody is going to be out of the office, then there's somebody able to take care of that item in their place. I like this for business continuity and increased work-life balance because in this instance, Mary Smith is able, who's responsible for System X, has a backup and she's able to take time off and completely disconnect. And then encourage your team members to take roles or tasks outside of their core job. Um, this could be within your IT team or within other teams as well. I have an example where a coworker of mine uh, had a, a non-IT business partner going on leave and needed somebody to fill in that business process. One of his IT team members stepped in there. She had never seen the business process from the business side. Talk about a great experience. And that all ties back up to the development item we were just talking about. And then diversity. Um, it is so important to have inclusiveness on your team and diverse thoughts. Each person is bringing their own unique perspective based off of their background, culture, experience, etc. And to have the most best brainstormed ideas, you need to have this. Otherwise, you're going to have groupthink and you're not going to go anywhere. Beringer Ingelheim has a culture of respect and empathy. And this is shown through our strategic pillars. So for example, one of the things they launched this year was a women in IT program where it's focused on mentoring and networking and building that IT talent um, of women. And then keep your team motivated through change. Change is scary. You need to help your team with that. So as I mentioned before, are you developing your team for the future needs of the organization? 
to provide them with information to be successful in their role, to help them with the change? Are you providing clarity when things are unclear? And be as transparent as you're able to be. So those are the three tips that I have for helping to keep your team motivated and driven. And I hope that by embracing those, you'll find the path to be able to do so and truly unlock your team's potential. So I think we have a minute for questions. Um, I don't know, Katie, if we can maybe have one or... Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you for all the questions in the chat. Um, the first one I'm seeing is, what do you do to get your employees Can't motivated? You. Oh. So maybe here, I see one, what do you do to get your employees motivated when they are lacking engagement? So this is a good one. Um, I think it's important to show the with them, right? What's in it for me? And if you do this, this will hopefully then help them be able to relate better to this. It also goes to tip number one with, um, wait, what did I say? Provide the drive, right? If they're connected to it, then they'll feel more inclined to do that. And then sometimes it's just having those more difficult conversations with their employees to, are they truly engaged and is it the right fit? So thank you for that. Okay, and we are at time. So thank you so much. Um, Please, if you have time, uh, check out the Beringer Ingle High meet and greet at 1130 Eastern Standard Time. Um, you can also come to one of our uh, virtual booths and we could talk then, connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you, greatly appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you, Angela. Thank you for this presentation. Thank you, Katie. Let's thank Angela in the chat. I will share some of your comments was a really fantastic presentation. And as Angela shared, make sure to stop by Beringa Ingelheim booth and say hi. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Angela, Katie, thank you very much for being with us today. People are thanking you in the chat and connect with, uh, connect with Angela on LinkedIn. Say thank you, think hi. Thank you once again and stay with us for the rest of the conference and see you at your booth. Thank you. Bye-bye.